Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Hey, good morning, Samira. Why is your voice like that? Uh, sorry, I I had um, a little allergy to the weather. Ah, well. <clears throat> Well, so, uh, well, sorry to hear that, but, you know, we all have some seasonal allergies, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope you're, you know, uh, hope you're going to recover or uh, hope you're going to feel better soon, okay? Thank or you. at least, yeah. you know, hope your voice will improve, right? Mm -hmm. All right, good morning. And uh, we have Saurav and Zachariah here, right? Good morning, guys. Are you guys there? Uh, it seems like we have even out of three people, only one person is really uh, online. Only one person is really, you know, present. There. Most oh, professor, so I am online. I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. How are you, sir? Rep? I'm uh, doing what good. happened to Zachariah? Uh, what happened to Zachariah? Zachariah, are you there? All right. Uh, so it looks like we have three people. That's that's very disappointing. Um, <clears throat> of a class, you know, from a class of twenty-five people uh, on the roster, <laughs> I have an even uh, only four here, right? In the uh, now, <clears throat> some people think. Some people think they um, uh, they can uh, they can pretend to be in class by just simply signing into uh, the discussion board um, and actually not being there, but you know they think they can pass for. Uh, present, but uh, you can't be more wrong because I can check. Because you know, if I go to um, if I go to uh, Blackboard, I can check the uh, the record of the login time. Okay, the, I can. Uh, what I can do is. Um, I can check the uh, the reports. For example, last class, I can check uh, how long people have been. I mean, uh, it was last Thursday. Thursday it was one hour class, and if you have been, you know, uh, uh, attending class full time i can tell you know zachariah was logged in for full you know uh, 52 minutes so rev was you know probably logged in longer than you know the class time but look you know uh randall he was logged in only 17 seconds and this cannot be uh, accepted as present okay um Look, I was logging the whole time. That was 51 minutes and 11 seconds. Reynold fully attended. Brianna fully attended. But Jalen, this cannot be accepted as, you know, uh, present because logged in for 19 minutes only. Right? So some people think they can... Uh, Some people think they can you know, uh, fool me, but you know, uh, you cannot fool me, right? I mean, if these people thought uh, they could do that. Now, <clears throat> so um, uh, let's go back to um, um, in our last class, right? If you remember, we were. Um, we downloaded uh, Apple, right? Uh, we downloaded Apple's 
monthly uh, price data for the last five years. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we ran out of time, so we couldn't uh, we couldn't uh, calculate returns. We, there was no time for us to get the returns, but now we can do that. So. As I said, um, return is uh, originally, think about it, we'll have to uh, include originally in return, there should be also um, dividend. But again, uh, dividend isn't not every month, right? Dividend isn't paid every month. Div dividend isn't, you know, uh, paid every month. It's quarterly thing, right? Um, so we cannot, um, we cannot apply this formula uh, with dividend in monthly return. Um, again, uh, if we use, you know, a monthly return every three months, we would have to deal with this, but sometimes dividend. Sometimes uh, they don't pay dividend. Uh, dividend is not uh, dividend is not like coupon in bond, uh, because in bond coupon payment is an obligation, because if you borrowed money, you have to pay interest. It's an obligation. It's a legal obligation, but dividend is not a legal obligation. It's just sharing a small part of the profit. Um, so, um, and it's totally, uh, it's so it's totally up to the management. And if they, um, if they don't pay dividends, you know, you can recoup that by selling your shares. Um, I've been telling you uh, about this ever since. So, um, <clears throat> So sometimes, you know, so dividend is not always there. It's not uh, like a regular, it's not a regular thing. Uh, and even if it is regular, it's it happens only um, quarterly, once every three months. So it becomes, you know, um, uh, rather, uh, when we are dealing with monthly data, it becomes rather, um, uh, a problem unless we deal with quarterly data or annual data but if you are dealing with quarterly or annual data we can uh, we have to have a very long time frame right because uh, even over 30 years you can have only 30 annual data right even over 10 years uh, even to use you know quarterly data then you have to use you know um, at least 10 year data, 10 years long, you know, right? The time frame has to be at least 10 years. And then you get only 40 data, data points. And then if you use such a long time frame, and if the data frequency is so um, uh, far, far between, then it's, it's very um, ineffective to capture the uh, dynamics in the uh, uh, price movement. So uh, we don't use daily data for actually uh, trying to figure out any long-term trend. Um, so then, you know, uh, it would have to be monthly data. Um, the month monthly data, in the monthly data, uh, again, since dividend is not occurring every month, um, that's why we are using adjusted close price. Right, we are using adjusted close price. That price is, you know, remember if you it was adjusted close price. Okay, you might wonder, oh, that's different number. Of course, because uh, it, the original data was sorted in ascending order, right? And I put it in descending order. So from you know. Uh, right from here right um, so that's why right and then 
so then you know if we use adjusted uh, close price, which is which has been already adjusted for dividends and stock splits, right? Uh, we can simply ignore this. We can simply ignore dividend, right? Uh, or assume it away, and then we can simply uh, deal with uh, this part, this formula, right? So then it's simple. Um, our return will be, right? Our return is... Oops, uh, yeah. This is PT, oh, oops, PT, right? Price at time T. And PT minus one. What's PT minus one? But PT minus one would be the March price. I mean, if PT is April price, PT minus one is March price. Goes without saying. Oh, um, and then divide it by PT minus one. Okay, and now that uh, I would give percentage to that. So obviously, um, almost 10% drop uh, between, you know, March and April. Uh, I will use percentage, you know, uh, and then give it, you know, at least two, two to three decimal places, two to three decimal places, okay? All right, and then uh, uh, again, <clears throat> this is the end of April price, end of March price, and when we downloaded this data, that was actually you know um, last Thursday. Last Thursday was last Thursday was twenty eighth. Actually, uh, so that's as of the twenty eighth because you know uh, actual. Actual end of April was the 29th, but you know um, we downloaded this data <clears throat> on the 28th, so 28th was the uh, end of you know uh, April for our data, for our data set, right? And I told you this is just the way the date is, the calendar, month, uh, the month is represented. It doesn't mean the first day of the month. Okay, you got to remember that. It's just uh, no matter what day of the month it is, as long as it's monthly data, it will always come out like this, okay? So it's just the way it is, you know, uh, 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 just the way it is uh, represented. Uh, so you can think of it this way. Uh, the first day of the month, uh, the first day of the month um, is being used as the representative of the month, okay? <clears throat> now, and then uh, uh, every, every month, the return is the same thing, so I'll just copy and drag it down. Well, I'll, I'll have to stop here because, you know, I cannot do it, uh, drag it all the way here, because if I do that, then you know there's no data here. Uh, you can't you can't get any return, right? Because there's nothing there, right? So um, that's what the uh, uh, monthly returns. That's what the monthly return is, right? Uh, of course, there's a lot of fluctuation. Uh, uh, sometimes negative, sometimes positive, you know. Uh, so uh, that brings us to a uh, uh, question, you know. Some, so uh, this is a legitimate question. So what was the highest monthly return and uh, what was the uh, lowest monthly return? Well, when was the best month, right? Uh, when did Apple have the best month in the last five years? When was the, uh, and when was the, uh, 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 worst month. Uh, to, uh, to answer that question, we can, let's say we can copy, uh, we can sort it, we can sort it by return, but I'm not going to sort it here. Uh, I'm going to sort it here. So I'm going to paste it here. I want you to do the same thing you want. Uh, and the reason, uh, and then, um, 
I'll go to paste and I'll select paste values only, values, okay? So I'll uh, paste only values so that there is no longer any formula here. Now, the, the reason for that, think about it, the reason is uh, if you don't do that, if there are formulas in these cells, when you sort it, right, then it will be all, you know, um, it will be all um, messed up. It will be all messed up because uh, it's not going to be the same. Um, it's not going to be, you know, because this, if this is formula, it depends on what values are here in column B. But, you know, uh, um, you cannot sort uh, what's in the formula, uh, what's in the column C is the formula. You cannot sort it by formula, right? That's why. Um, so um, after pasting it only as values, then now I can sort, right? Go to home and sort the largest, the smallest. And then you can tell, oh, August 2020 was the best month. And then November 2018 was the worst month. And it looks like almost um, half of them were negative and half. No, it's actually uh, more of them are positive. Uh, how do I know? Uh, if I take average, let's take average here, right? And if average is positive, that means there were more positive returns, right? If there was same number of positive and negative returns, and if the, the positive and some of the positive and negative uh, uh, values are the same, then average will be uh, zero. But, you know, the average, uh, let's take average, okay? So I'm going to take, uh, uh, you can use, you know, a function or you can just uh, type in average, okay? I'm going to highlight everything in the, uh, uh, in that column, highlight, hit enter. Uh, it comes to like 2.899%, which is almost like 2.9%. Um, and you might wonder, uh, you might think, oh, that, that doesn't seem very impressive. It's not even 3%. It's almost 3%. It's not even 3% a month. Look, but think about it. This is five years, 60 months. So think about it. Over five years, how much growth would it have? You all know how to uh, do this uh, because if it grows, if it grows consistently at this rate, it's going to be, think about it. 1 plus this leads to 60, 60 months. That's one. Okay. 4.521 times or in percentage. Four hundred and fifty two percent almost 500%, right? It will give you almost 500, 452% growth over five years. That means the future value, I mean, uh, five years later, five years ago, it was this, okay? And then So I'm going to uh, put it here. Five years ago, uh, it was like that. Five years later, we can predict what this is going to be like. Uh, oh, it's 
five year, you know, uh, five year growth. Um, so, okay. Oh no, no, in dollars. Uh, yeah, this is in dollars. It should be like this. Yeah, and we are not exactly, uh, we are close, right? I mean, you know, uh, um, uh, in March, March, Apple ended with $174, right? So um, see how powerful 3% growth a month is? 3% uh, growth a month is really a powerful growth. Right? Makes sense. Now, <clears throat> uh, think about it. From from thirty six dollars, right? And from thirty six dollars to uh, uh, one hundred and seventy four dollars, or one hundred fifty six dollars, almost you know, uh, from thirty six dollars, almost you know, five times. Right or four times, you know, because thirty-six is almost like forty dollars, four times, right? Which is exactly you now uh, represented by this. If it grew exactly like this, it would have been like this, right? But anyway, <clears throat> our question is then. So everyone is doing this. Everyone has done that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, only one person holds. Only one person. Yes. Okay, good. But I'm here as well. Uh, my All mic right, good. switch on right away. So it takes. So you guys time. have, you guys, you guys got to the same yes, result. Yes. You guys got to the same result. Yes, professor. Okay, that's what I'm asking, guys. So Rev and Zechariah, huh? It's important. Uh, you need to get to the same result now. Our next question is, okay, on average, uh, Apple grew monthly like this over the last five years. Then the, uh, obviously, um, next question is, um, so naturally you would wanna know, oh, what is the average deviation from the mean then? What is the average deviation? Now think about it. Uh, in the best month, <clears throat> of course, the deviation from the mean was very uh, wide, right? Uh, it's almost like 18% uh, difference. But some months, right? Um, and <clears throat> a month like this, very little deviation, right? But again, uh, in like November 2018, uh, the deviation is like almost you know 15% uh, again. So uh, very so that sometimes deviation is very small, sometimes very wide uh, or uh, very big. Um, Naturally, you would like to know what was the average of these deviations? What was the average of these deviations? Okay, wouldn't it, uh, don't you think it would be uh, useful to know uh, average deviation? That way, you know, uh, we can uh, pretty much, you know, uh, uh, say with, you know, uh, okay, um, uh, Apple grew uh, on average, you know, 3% uh, a month, but, you know, uh, the range of deviation was, you know, on average, uh, you know, between this and this, right? So uh, you have, you know, uh, 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 some measure of, you know, uh, estimating what would be the uh, the return, you know, uh, the range of, you know, possible uh, values for return next month, right? Uh, okay, for uh, so we want we want to know okay so we want to know then uh, 
to find the average deviation. So we'll find the deviation is the difference, right? So uh, we'll find the difference, right? Which is, you know, um, difference between each monthly return and the average return. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to first, you know, um, freeze panes so that as I scroll down or up, I won't lose sight of the labels. Okay. <clears throat> but here, uh, I'm going to lock this. You'll need to lock the average because I'm going to, I'm not going to do this one by one. I'm going to copy and drag it down. So when I drag it down, I don't want C62 to move. I want it to be there in C62. So I got to lock it first uh, by hitting F4, and then I drag it down. Okay. <clears throat> and there... Um, So these are um, these are differences, right? Dif they are called difference terms, and um, it looks like um, do we have sixty data points? No, we don't. Why? Um, this is sixty, right? This is sixty, right? That's sixty. Um, but we lost one. We lost one because uh, to calculate return, we needed another row of another. You know, in other words, April 2017 data, right? So we have only 59, but that's okay. Um, but let me um, So actually, I uh, actually I downloaded, you know, only uh, we can we can download again, but you know it's not really necessary. I found, you know, um, uh, I only copied, you know, April 2017 data. Uh, that's from another class, so I'll just. Uh, I'll just, you know, add it in there, okay? So you can just, you know, uh, manually add in this. And then, of course, uh, we're going to have okay, uh, we'll have one more data one more data point. And for this, I can use, you know, uh, C61. Now, now it's 2.946. Okay. So uh, our next question is, okay, so what would be the average, you know, deviation, uh, average deviation from the mean? So, oh, you th what you think is, oh, I'm going to, to take average, I'm going to sum all of this and divide it by 60. Right? But then when you do that, you'll get baffled. You know, it baffles you because you can't you cannot move any you cannot move forward. You're completely you no know, uh, uh, blocked. Like, you know, you ran into a uh, it's a dead end. Why is it zero? Of course, it's going to be zero. Why? Because you are taking the, uh, you are summing up, you summed up all the difference terms. And this dif these difference terms, what? The difference between uh, every data point and the average. And what is an average? Average is a uh, very neutral number. Average is a very neutral number. So this is the difference difference with the average, difference from the average. So that means, you know, half of these are 
positive numbers and half of these are negative numbers and they happen to be uh, they happen to be equal right so if I you know uh, think about it. if I copy this oh I cannot put it here because uh, uh, I cannot put it here now. but you know uh, let me let me sort this by the date again If I sort it by the date again, and then what I'm saying is, you know, uh, it's going to be, and copy this, uh, they will cancel out. Half of them would be positive, half of them would be negative, and they will cancel out, right? This still has, you know, uh, there is nothing in C60. Uh, this is because because it has, you know, um, formula in there. I'll have to uh, again copy. And then paste the special, just paste value only, values, and then, you know, I can get rid of this, and get rid of this. So, think about it, if I sort it in descending order again, the difference will also be exactly in descending order because that's the difference with you know each monthly return and the average the mean and you will see half of them uh it, it won't be exactly half but you know um uh, uh 32 32 of them are positive that means 28 are negative 27 are negative. Uh, so is that, that should be 60. 59? Oh, uh, I missed this. Okay, uh, but that's fine. Uh, but you know, uh, the point is, you know, they will cancel out each other. They will cancel out, right? So that's why. So we cannot use that. Uh, now we are, you know, um, <clears throat> now we are stuck here. So how do we find the average, you know, uh, the average deviation? Um, one thing we can do is we can raise, we can square, we can square all of these different terms you might wonder um so if about half of them are positive half of them are negative can we just throw away the uh, uh negative ones and just use the positive one no that is very very inappropriate why first of all you have 60 data points if you have 60 data points 60 these 60 data points have its own dynamics in the you know in in the data set uh, in the data itself why because this is how Apple moved over the last five years that is a movement right so that if you throw away half the data set then the that dynamics is gone I mean you know um, up and down and up and down and up and down you you're throwing away whenever there was down then you know uh, What's going to be the uh, the pattern of the uh, uh, price movement? There's no pattern of the price movement, right? And the returns movement as well. Um, so we cannot uh, we, and should not throw away half, you know, uh, negative ones. But uh, we have to preserve all 60 data points. And to do that, uh, we will 
uh, if we square it, the problem is uh, the problem is taken care of. Uh, not 100%, but you know we can we can you know uh, 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 also you know uh, take care of that later. Um, if we square everything, then you know uh, uh, will even the negative ones even the negative ones will be positive. Anything squared is positive, so I'm gonna square it. And then, uh, of course, I'll give it also percentage. Okay, three decimal places, and then drag it down. Okay, now let's try that. So I'm gonna uh, sum, use auto sum, right? Oops, why isn't it working? Yeah. I'm going to auto sum everything. Um, it, actually, it shouldn't include E62 because there's no data there. If you include it, uh, Excel will consider it as 61 data point with one data, with one data point being zero. So I'll just end it with E61. Oops. So why is it doing that again? Come on, my mouse is okay. Hit enter. So, um, yes, this is the sum of all the difference terms. Okay, so, um I'm going to, but then, you know, I'll have to divide it by N, isn't that right? I'll have to divide it by N. Uh, avoid, avoid, you know, uh, uh, thick colors by all means, because, you know, when you print it out, uh, it's going to come out as, uh, dark black, you know, uh, in a black and white printer. It's really hard to see what's in there. Uh, I'm just, so this is called, um, we need to divide it by N, but before that, you know, uh, I'll give this name. Uh, this is called sum of squares. Sum of squares, right? What does that mean? You know, these are all squared terms, right? And I summed it, right? Summed all these square terms, hence sum of squares. Okay. Now I'm going to have to uh, um, divide it by N if I want average, right? If I want average, you might wonder why I'm copying. I'm just copying it for the uh, the format, the font, right? And the bold and, you know, the uh, highlight and things like that. Because I, want, I don't want to do it, you know, uh, over and over. So I just copy that and uh, for that formatting, right? Next, you know, so, oh, uh, because I'm trying to take the average, you know, uh, deviation. So if I divide it by the number of data points, then that must be it. No, actually, um, uh, you cannot divide it by N, but you should, you can, you divide it by n minus one only, uh, n minus one, why? It's called, you know, uh, it's because of loss of one degree of freedom, loss of one degree of freedom. And I'm gonna get to that later. So um, uh, I know it's gonna be 59, but you know, instead of just, you know, um, uh, convincing myself it is 59, I will exactly, uh, I will make Excel count exactly how many data points are there. So I'll use count command. And, you know, that's 60. I mean, you know, by that, by highlighting it, I would already know. And subtract one, right? Because I want a loss of one degree of freedom. 
you have to put everything in the parenthesis so that that would be the uh, denominator, right? Otherwise, if you don't put it in the parenthesis, you know what happens. The E63 will be divided by uh, this thing first, and then one will be subtracted from that. And that's not what we want. So if we do that, we come to something like 0.747%. And what is this? This is sort of like average deviation from the mean. Average deviation. But one thing you have forgotten, one thing that you have for, or maybe, you know, you still remember this and, you know, it's still bothering you. How can this be average, you know, uh, deviation? We squared it. So isn't it a sort of like blown up picture of average deviation? Yes, it's a blown up picture, right? It's not the true deviation, uh, actual size of the actual life size deviation, but it's blown up picture. But we know how to convert it into life size picture, actual size. We know because how? Because we squared it, we blew it up by squaring it. We blew up the picture by squaring it. So uh, we can return it to life size picture by taking the square root of it, right? By taking the square root. Yeah. So, um, but you know, before we do that, this blown, blown up picture, this blown up picture of um, average deviation is called variance. And then next we need to uh, we need to take the square root. square root of that, okay, and then it's called, this is the life size picture, this is the actual size of the average deviation, and that's called standard deviation, okay. standard deviation is already, by name it means that's the average deviation, isn't it right? Now, taking the square root, you can do it like that, or you can also do it like this, because we all know Square root is <coughs> raising to half, half power. That's the same thing, right? If I turn it into percentage or right, increase decimal, right? Exactly the same thing. Isn't that right? All right. So this is basically, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 in in the slide, right? I mean, average is easy, but you know, uh, uh, in the slide, um, standard deviation is explained in a, a quite complicated way. <clears throat> Look, uh, um, in statistics, they will t teach you. In statistics, you learn how to find, you know, variance, and it's like this. Um, and you, usually, it is uh, not like this. Here, they use, you know, uh, uh, probability. It's probability weighted. Uh, when the probability is used, right? probability of x, right? When the probability is used, you don't need to uh, uh, divide it by n minus 1. But usually in the statistics class, uh, ignore this, uh, this is what they tell you uh, as uh, variance. This is what they tell you. And what does that mean? What is it? Um, Look, uh, xi is uh, individual return. In our in our example, it's return. Xi, i means individual. So, uh, and i runs from one through n. In our example, n is sixty. Isn't that right? In our example, n is sixty. And um, 
X bar is the average. So that's the average return. So what is this? Xi minus X bar is the difference term. Difference term. And then squared. So it's squared difference terms, right? Squared difference terms. And then you have 60 of them. And you summed, right? You summed all of those 60 terms. So this whole nu numerator, this entire numerator is what? This entire numerator is sum of squares, right? Isn't that right? The entire uh, numerator is sum of squares. This entire numerator is sum of squares. And then uh, we divided by n minus 1. Okay, and that's the variance. And then the stand, uh, variance is also um, expressed as sigma, sigma squared. And sigma is Greek character for S. S stands for standard deviation. Uh, X, the random variable we are talking about, we are using is uh, X. In our case, that's the uh, return. If sigma is standard deviation, we know uh, uh, standard deviation squared is variance, right? So that's variance. And then standard deviation is the uh, square root of the uh, uh, variance. And ignore this. We know um, this is variance. So if you take the square root of variance, that's the standard deviation, right? So that's um, that's what we just did, without even you know uh, uh, talking about, without even referring to uh, the uh, you know stand you know uh, very you know hackneyed uh, mathematical expression of variance and standard deviation okay all righty so i think this is a good time to take a break so let's take a 10 minute break and reconvene at uh, 1201 okay right um
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, so, um, um, what do we do with the uh, mean and the standard deviation? First of all, um, the mean is also called expected return. In this case, uh, it's the return average or the mean of the return. So it's called, it's also called expected return. Okay, so uh, average is called average or expected return. That means um, that's what is expected. Okay. Or average mean. Uh, mean or Uh, maybe a mean or expected return, right? Uh, standard deviation is the, um, think about it. This is all about the uh, volatility of, um, if you think about it, uh, wh why did we want to find the uh, average deviation from the mean? Because mean is the um, expected uh, path and the uh, so uh, pretty much, you know, you can expect, uh, uh, so what it's telling you is that over the last, okay, so maybe I better put it down here. Over the last six, uh, six uh, 60 months or five years, uh, average, return oops was about you know two point um, uh, about three percent and then there was uh, what should I um, but around around that path, right, around that uh, mean, there has been a lot of uh, fluctuations. Uh, in other words, the fluctuations uh, are basically of volatility. Um, and to put it in another way, um, the expected return is literally, the reason it is called expected return is because literally, that is what's expected uh, in uh, it's the best guess it's the best guess of what it's gonna be what it's gonna uh, look like uh, uh, what our return is gonna be like in the um, in the future or uh, to be more specific next month what the next month return will be well, of course, the, the, the actual next month return may be different, but that's the best guess we have. That's the best educated, rational guess we can have, right? What else can it be? I mean, you know, um, that's the most rationally uh, expected return based on the past performance. Right, uh, and the actual return may be different, but that's only natural. It won't. Uh, and then there has been, so it's like this. Um, expected return k of x. Now you see the bar there, huh? Uh, K means cost of capital, uh, so cost of equity, right? Cost of, uh, you remember cost of debt. We used, you know, you learned in the past, you know, uh, uh, cost of debt, right? The cost of capital, uh, that's basically, you know, um, what it takes, right, to raise the capital. Now, 
just like cost of you know uh, debt, uh, cost of X is the uh, uh, the return, the required return actually required return on uh, stock X. Now the bar on top, the bar that means I told you that means mean. So that is the uh, uh, our mean return. In our example, it is like 2.9%. Okay, and um, the fluctuation around the mean, there will be a lot of fluctuations, but on average, uh, what was the uh, standard deviation? The standard deviation was 8.65, so let's just say 8.7, okay? So the standard deviation was uh, 8.7. Ignore what's in here. I mean, that's not our. Uh... So 8.7 doesn't mean this point. Uh, actually, uh, this magnitude is 8.7. This distance is 8.7. So 8.7% from 2.9. Uh, this point will be then what? This point will be uh, 10, 11 point six, right? So one standard deviation above mean, so this is uh, standard deviation, right? You know, sigma stands for standard deviation. Um, so one standard deviation above mean it will be 11.6 and then two standard deviations another right two standard deviation above mean will be 11.6 plus 8.7 would be <clears throat> 20 Point three. Okay, and think about it. Uh, then one standard deviation below mean One standard deviation below mean. Uh, right? That will be a uh, uh, two point nine minus eight point seven. So what's it gonna be? Uh, Uh, negative five point what? Negative five point eight, right? Uh, and then another eight point seven. Another standard deviation. Uh, that will be like fourteen point. Uh, Fourteen point five, right? So, um, based on our um, and we are, uh, we can apply our mean and standard deviation to the uh, properties of normal distribution. And normal distribution is not necessarily. Um, uh, not necessarily, you know, um, uh, default, but you know, uh, most random, any uh, most random variables, any random variable, most random variables are um, distributed uh, as normal distribution, right? Um, and the stock stock price, uh, you know, uh, daily movement of the stock price is really a random variable. 
The return of stock price up to a month is a random variable. It's really randomly happening. Uh, so if, if we apply random uh, normal distribution characteristics, uh, properties to our um, sample, um, we, can, we can come to a, a certain uh, hypothesis that it's not just a hypothesis. I mean, you know, this is a standardized, um, according to a, uh, a standardized, you know, um, uh, statistical uh, theory of normal distribution that, you know, um, uh, the probability of earning any return the probability of earning any return between 2.9% and 11.6%. In other words, you know, one standard, um, any return between our mean and one standard deviation above the mean. So think about it. There is a probability distribution. I mean, you 2.9% is mean. At, I told you actual return may not be 2.9%, right? Our um, next month, our best guess is 2.9%, but the reality will be quite different. Reality can be quite different. So the reality would be, you know, um, uh, actually, you know, the return may be like five point something, seven point something, right? It could be even, you know, uh, 24 point something, but what is the probability of our return? Uh, to fall within mean and one standard deviation above mean. What's the probability of that happening, right? So that's what that's what matters. We can, in other words, we can make a forecast of the actual return with probability, and so. Um, any return between 2.9%, which is, you know, of course, 2.9 is our, you know, uh, expected return or the mean return. Um, the probability of the actual return falling actually happening between 2.9 and 11.6, that probability is 34%. Okay. Again, the same thing here. The probability of earning any return, uh, anything, Actual, the probability of the actual return uh, happening between 2.9% uh, and negative 5.8%, uh, right? So uh, within one standard deviation below the mean, right? That's another 34%. Okay. So some of you may get confused, you know, I mean, because uh, it's percentage, you know, everything is percentage. Uh, but look, the percentage on the horizontal axis is the stock return, our Apple's return. Okay, Apple, so it's the return. And the probability here, 34%, that's probability, right? So you need to, uh, you need to uh, uh, make a clear distinction between the two. And so think about it. If uh, if it is 34% to the right side and 34% to the left hand side, to the left side, uh, this is 68%. Isn't that right? That's 68%. So the probability of earning any return, uh, the probability of the actual return next month to fall within one standard deviation around the mean, around is 68 percent and then if we go another one standard deviation then uh, that's two standard deviations from the mean that's 26 uh, 20.3 so then next question is what's the probability of what's the probability of this area in other words uh, what's the probability of a our actual return happening between 11.6% and 20.3%. In other words, you know, uh, between one standard deviation and 
uh, two standard deviations, that probability is 14%. And it's the same here, that probability of earning anything between uh, negative 5.8 and negative 14.5, which is, you know, um, one step between one standard deviation and two standard deviations, that probability is 14%. And now think about it. Outside, um, so then uh, the, the probabilities between negative two standard deviation and positive two standard deviation, the whole thing is 96%. Isn't that right? The whole thing is 96%. Why? Because, you know, it's 60, 68% uh, within one standard deviation, 68%. And then 14%, 14%. Uh, between one and two standard deviations uh, in the right side and in the left side. Together, that's 28%. So if you add them up, it's 96%, right? That means the only area left is now this area, extremely high or extremely low returns. So think about it. If you earn, uh, if next month return, uh, happens to be somewhere above 20.3%, that, that's possible, but the probability is only 2%. That probability is only 2%. Also, uh, next month return can happen, I mean, in, in the very uh, low return area, like, you know, uh, the left tail, left tail uh, below, you know, negative uh, 15%, 14.5%, something like negative 16%, 17%, that's possible, negative 18%. But that's also the probability of those returns to actually happen. It's pretty low, 2%. Okay. So then, you know, 2%, 2%, that's 4%. That, that explains, you know, everything, 100%, right? And these 2% areas are called outliers. Outlier. Because literally, um, it's literally, you know, uh, uh, lying outside. And it's very rare to happen, right? It's very rare to happen. So this is one way we can use um, standard deviation and mean and standard deviation to uh, forecast the future return with probability. Another thing you can do is um, okay, here um, another thing you can do you use this is uh, selecting uh, when you are selecting stocks. Okay, when you select the stocks. Now think about it. Um, uh, you screen hundreds of stocks, you screen hundreds of stocks to uh, uh, find best stocks, best three, let's say best three. And you want, you, suppose you have $1 million and you want to uh, invest this $1 million into uh, uh, best performing stocks. So you screened hundreds of stocks and came up with these three. Um, you came up with these three stocks, X, Y, and Z, based on uh, two criteria. One, first criteria, uh, expected return or the mean return, in other words, mean, right? That's Greek character mu, uh, that's M. So that's, you know, mean. Uh, X has, you know, uh, expected return of 30%. Uh, 25%, Y has expected return of 30%, Z 10%. 10% uh, doesn't seem that uh, uh, impressive, but you know, let's say uh, there, there was another criteria. The other criterion was the uh, standard deviation, right? And the standard deviation is, Actually, uh, remember what standard deviation is? 
average uh, average size of the volatility and volatility is the risk right think about it if everything if everything behaves exactly as predicted then there is no risk but since um as you have seen uh this is the uh, predicted 2.9 percent is the predicted uh path predicted return but the reality will deviate there is you know a probability of that to deviate one standard deviation right from it there's 68 percent probability of actual return to deviate uh, from that mean right uh within one standard deviation so everything um that volatility is the risk and the risk is uh, most of the times you might think um uh, uh, risk is Uh, something like, you know, uh, uh, you think only the uh, this side is the risk, you think, right? The actual return being lower than the mean return. Um, that's clearly a risk, but even, you know, um, the that's called downside, downside risk. But that means this side is called upside risk. Isn't that right? Why? Uh, think about it. Nobody, um, oh, it's true. Um, no, nobody will say, nobody will uh, be, you know, uh, upset for uh, getting an abnormally higher return than the expected return. Isn't that right? Nobody will say, damn, you know, uh, uh, this month my stock uh had you know a 25 percent return uh the expected return was only 10 percent damn why did it have such a high return nobody will say that nobody will complain right actually um only people people will say damn uh, you know the expected return was 10 percent but this this month i had you know uh um negative two percent return of course, people will be upset only, you know, if only in case of the downside risk. But um, and everybody will welcome the upside risk because it's a uh, uh, you know pleasant surprise. It's a surprise, but it's a pleasant surprise. But again, it's still a risk in the sense that um, whether it is deviating to the left or to the down or to uh, deviating up, it's both volatility and volatility doesn't work only in one way. Volatility works in both ways, right? You have to, uh, you have to remember that the volatility doesn't uh, work only in one way. So if there is a negative, vol you know, uh, negative volatility, I mean, volatility um, deviating into the reg negative side that volatility works also exactly the same to the right side as well or the upside as well right so uh variance is the volatility standard deviation is the volatility and variance and standard deviation are basically uh like uh twins right because one is just the uh, square root of the other okay and uh, so um, this is return and uh, oh reward, right? Return is uh, of course reward, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and standard deviation is the risk. It's the risk you have to take to earn this return. Right? So by only one criteria, right, uh, one criterion, uh, expect a return, Y will be your number one stock, and X will be your number two stock, Z will be your number three stock. But uh, if, I, if we uh, look at the other criteria, uh, which is you know, uh, uh, the standard deviation, 
Z is your number one stock. X is your number two stock. Um, y is your number three stock. So then this is a conflict. I mean, mind boggling situation. Why? Uh, you cannot, if you, you cannot just go by the, the expect return or you cannot go by just the uh, uh, standard deviation. Then what do you do? I mean, um, you'll have to, you'll have to use something. You'll have, you'll need a metric that can uh, sort this out. That metric is called mean variance ratio or mean standard deviation ratio because expect return is the mean. Uh, this is standard deviation, but standard deviation is, of course, you know, another, uh, the other uh, side of the uh, variance, right? So it's called, you know, uh, it should be called mean standard deviation ratio, but, you know, it's also called mean variance ratio. Also, it's called return risk ratio because expect a return and risk. So it's called return risk ratio. Now think about return risk ratio. It's a, uh, it's a kind of output to input ratio. Output to input ratio, right? Think about it. it already intu intuitively, it tells you what this means, output to input ratio. I mean, obviously the higher the output for the given input, it's it's better than the uh, lower ratio. The higher this ratio, uh, the better it is. Uh, a typical example of output input ratio is gas mileage, right? And gas mileage is what? We all know what gas mileage is, right? It's how many gallons per, uh, how many miles per gallon. And the higher this number, the more productive or more uh, efficient the engine is, the car, right? For cars engine is, um, the higher this number. In other words, for just a small amount of, small amount of fuel, um, if this number is high, you get a lot of miles, right? So it's the same thing. The risk is our input. You have to, you have to take this risk. Taking this risk means you are investing in this stock. You are willing to take the risk of this stock, right? So that's the input. And then the return is the reward for taking that risk or the output. So if this number is higher, the higher the number is, the, the better it is. So if I calculating this number, right? Um, Z has the highest gas mileage, right? And then X, and then Y, okay? So this tells how just looking at one thing is, can be, you know, misleading. Because if you look at only the expected returns, then Y is the best stock. Z would be the worst stock, but it's the opposite. Right? I mean, it, it, it's not the same thing, you know. When, and actually, um, uh, instead, um, although return risk ratio or mean, mean standard deviation ratio is very uh, uh, obvious um, metric, but the textbook is showing you what they call coefficient of variation. And what what this is is what this is. Uh, coefficient of variation is actually the uh, reciprocal, reciprocal of mean variance ratio. Mean variance ratio raised to negative one is the reciprocal. The reciprocal means, you know, like in gas mileage, if we compare it to gas mileage, right? In the U.S., we use uh, miles per gallon, right? But in most other countries, Europe, Asia, they all use inverse gas mileage. What is inverse gas mileage? Liters per kilometer, liters per kilometer. So the focus is simply, um, think about it. How many liters do you have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, burn to, 
to run uh, one kilometer. So in this sense, the lower the number is, the better it is. Because the lower the number, the less gas you use, right? To cover the same uh, kilometers, right? Or mileage. So it's simply a matter of, you know, uh, focus. Because in those countries, um, U.S. is an oil producing country. I mean, U.S. has a lot of oil, actually, you know. Um, uh, importing is um, uh, drilling, you know, uh, the oil, domestic oil. Um, uh, they just don't do that because, you know, uh, uh, one reason is they are uh, uh, conservation. Uh, they are preserving the, uh, uh, the natural resource. Uh, second, uh, it's cheaper to import. So, um, but, you know, if OPEC countries run out of oil, uh, they pump out everything, then U.S. will be the only country with the oil reserve. So um, U.S. Uh, actually, uh, in 1970s and 80s, cars were very, very big, in 70s especially, in 70s. And, you know, uh, the engines were also very big. Uh, these days, you know, um, uh, big engines like, you know, 4.8 liter, you know, uh, eight-cylinder V8, or even, a, I mean, uh, Cadillac Escalade and uh, Ford, whatever, you know, um, uh, very big SUVs, they have very big engine, they are gas guzzlers. And they don't, you know, the mileage is very poor. Everyone would know. 1980s, those cars were just average, you know, um, they all had, you know, V8, you know, um, uh, five liter engines or even uh, more. Why, how could that happen? Only in the US, they could enjoy, gas consumption without worrying about it. But in most other parts of the world, gas, they they don't have gas. They have to import gas. They all have to import gas. So uh, they have to watch the usage of gas very carefully. And they use gas very sparingly. That's why they use inverse gas mileage. Okay? If you ever... If you have ever been to Europe, you would know uh, in the cities like Paris, nobody drives something like SUV. Nobody drives something like, you know, a Ford, uh, you know, um, Ford F-150 or, you know, uh, a Chevy something. Because those gas guzzlers, you know, they can't afford it. The gas price is too high. And in the corner, street corners in the U.S., street corners are just blocks. So it's square. In the US. Also, most of the cars in Europe, they are so small. Yeah, yeah, of course. Some of them, you know they why? Have because two seats. what? Some of them, they have just two seats. Yeah, yeah, not just two seats. You know, I mean, uh, look, they they can have four doors, but still very small. You know, uh, the, uh, si the size of the car, like you know what you know, uh, a Volkswagen Golf is. Golf is a very small car. Uh, I mean, but it is like average size in Europe. Um, and uh, in cities like Paris, street corners are rounded like this. It's not a, a square block like this. And then they park cars, you know, uh, they have like, you know, uh, 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 Mercedes, you know, uh, smart, smart is, made by Mercedes, uh, and they can park in the street corner, even in a corner like this, they can park. Cars like, you know, Fiat 500 or Minis or, uh, yeah, Golf, a uh, Volkswagen Golf is just as big as Mini, and uh, it's just the average size there. And in such small cars, I've seen I've seen in the past, no, uh, I was in Paris, it was just Volkswagen Golf and the car stopped in front of us and the door opened and five big guys were in the car. The guys were almost like crumpled into the car and then the door opened and one guy got off and then there were two more guys in the back. <laughs> 
So another guy got off uh, and the last guy got off and the other two guys got back in again. So they can park like in the corners, they can park like this. You can't even imagine parking like this in the US because in the US, how can you, the cars are like this and to park, you, there's no way. I mean, you are blocking the street. So this is just shameless, selfish and shameless. These big SUVs in the US and the people who drive those big SUVs, they are just, I would Professor, say so everybody selfish knows, and shameless. Everybody, huh? everybody knows that you, US is the most consuming country. That's true. And you should have some, you know, uh, uh, humility, some humbleness at some point, you know, moderation, some moderation. Of course, you know, uh, I pay for my own gas. What was the problem? <laughs> you can, um, to fill your 20 gallon tank, maybe you'll pay, you know, it's, it's like $4 now. So to fill 20 gallon tank, it's $80. You pay $80, but then you are polluting the air buy as much, right? And big SUVs or big trucks, when they drive in, when you have such a big SUV in front of you, blocking the lane, this is a nuisance, public nuisance. You are doing a disservice to the public. You're blocking the view of the vision. You're blocking the view of other people the traffic behind you and they don't care they don't care they're just you know uh, just brazen and shameless like donald trump they just huh? want to be comfortable Com you can be comfortable in an average size car i mean one person just one small guy driving a big suv that's more than comfort that's not comfort, you know, that's, they are living large and living large without shame. When you, you can be comfortable, but not at other people's expense. If you're blocking the lane, you're not driving even fast, but blocking, taking the uh, fast lane and blocking the traffic behind you, completely blinding that, you know, the uh, vehicles behind you then, you know, this is shameless nuisance and they don't realize that. They don't realize that. The selfishness, I mean, pursuit of their own comfort at the expense of others, that's selfishness, shameless selfishness. And then probably US is the only country that don't have any guilt, that don't feel any guilt about inconveniencing others. And one good example of that is big SUVs, big trucks, gas guzzlers. Okay, so anyway, um, uh, the discussion, you know, got, you know, uh, kind of escapaded. Um, digressed, you know, uh, so uh, either way you get to the same ranking. I mean, uh, mean variance, mean standard deviation ratio or risk return, uh, return risk ratio. Uh, uh, y is, I mean, um, Z is number one, X is number two, uh, Y is number three. Now, if you use inverse ratio, coefficient of variation, uh, the lower the number, the better it is. So uh, still, um, Z is number one, X is number two, right? Y is number three. Okay, so uh, 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 that's how we can use, you know, standard uh, the mean and standard deviation for our purpose. Okay, um, any uh any questions actually the class is dismissed uh it's uh we're already five minutes past the uh five minutes past the hour 
Any questions? No, I have a question, Professor. You do? Yeah, it's, not, it's not about the course, it's about our um, my midterm. And, okay, uh, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. So uh, the class is dismissed, so I'm gonna stop recording and you may be excused. You may be excused. Uh, so stop recording and uh, you can stick around uh, for the